What's up, everyone, and welcome to this week's Cybersecurity Weekly, where we review the security events that happened in the last week. As always, I have broken the stories down in the timeline so you can jump around to any story you see fit. If you find my work valuable, of course, I ask you to hit the like button, and if you have not already, subscribe to my channel. We start off today with patches. VMware has published security updates to address the critical remote code execution vulnerability known as Spring 4 Shell CVE 2022-22965. According to the virtualization giant, the flaw impacts many of its cloud computing and virtualization products. The Spring 4 Shell issue was disclosed last week. It resides in the Spring Core Java framework. An unauthenticated remote attacker could trigger the vulnerability to execute arbitrary code on the target system. Framework is currently maintained by Spring.io, which is a subsidiary of VMware. The Spring Framework is an application framework and inversion of control container for the Java platform. The framework's core features can be used by any Java application, but there are extensions for building web applications on top of the Java EE or Enterprise Edition platform. The vulnerability was disclosed after a Chinese security researcher published a proof of concept exploit before deleting its account. Now VMware published a list of affected products. The company also released workarounds for those products that have yet to receive a security fix for the Spring 4 shell. Multiple products impacted by remote code execution vulnerability CVE 2022-22965 reads the advisory published by VMware. A malicious actor with network access to an impacted VMware product may exploit this issue to gain full control of the target system. The flaw impacts VMware Tanzu application service for VMs, VMware Tanzu operations manager, and VMware Tanzu Kubernetes grid integrated edition. VMware has addressed critical remote code vulnerabilities in multiple products, including VMware's Workspace ONE Access, VMware Identity Manager, vRealize Lifecycle Manager, vRealize Automation, and VMware Cloud Foundation products. Now, these fixes are different than the Spring 4 Shell fixes. This is a, these are different problems. Virtualization Giant urges its customers to address the critical vulnerability immediately to prevent its exploitation. The flaws addressed by the company have been tracked to CVE 2022-22955, CVE 2022-22955, CVE 2022-22956, CVE 2022-957, 958, 959, 960, and 961. So if you look at each one of them, the CVE 2022-22954 is a service-side template injection remote code execution vulnerability. The 22-955 uh, and 22-956 are OAuth2 ACS authentication bypass vulnerabilities. 957 and 958 are the 959 is a cross-site request forgery, or CSRF. The 960 is a privilege escalation vulnerability, and the 961 is unauthorized information disclosure. The good news is that the company is not aware of attacks in the wild exploiting these vulnerabilities. We now move on to attacks, vulnerabilities, and Researchers from Fortinet have observed the Chinese app group Deep Panda exploiting a Log4Shell exploit to compromise VMware Horizon servers and deploy previously undetected Fire Chili Rootkit. The experts observed opportunistic attacks against organizations in several countries and various sectors. The targeted organizations operate in the financial, academic, cosmetics, and travel industries. The kernel rootkit employed by the threat actors is signed with a stolen digital certificate, which is the same certificate used by the Winti Cyber Espionage Group. The Fire Chili rootkit performs basic system tests to ensure it's not running on a simulated environment and checks out the kernel structures and objects to be abused during operation are present. Upon launching the rootkit, it performs some checks to avoid running in a virtualized environment and uses direct kernel object object modification for its operations. For this reason, the rootkit relies on specific operating system builds as otherwise it may cause the infected machine to crash. The latest supported, supported build is Windows 10 Creators Update Redstone 2, which was released in April 2017. The malware uses IOCTLs, or Input Output Control System calls, to hide the driver's registry key, the loader and backdoor files, and the loader process. The rootkit implements a file system mini filter using code based on Microsoft's official driver code samples and uses two mechanisms to, preventing, uh, to prevent process termination and hide process respectively. 
The malware uses a code based on an open source project published by a Chinese developer to hide registry keys from users using Microsoft's, Microsoft's registry editor. The Firetrailer rootkit is also able to hide TCP connections from tools such as Netstat borrowing code for this feature from another open source project. The group DeepPanda is a well-known app that during the past few years has targeted defense, financial, and other industries in the US. The group employed many zero-day exploits to spread different malware, including the popular Poison Ivory. Researchers from Sonar Source discovered two 15-year-old security flaws in the Pair PHP extension application repository, repository that could have enabled supply chain attacks. Pair is a framework and distribu distribution system for reusable PHP components. According to the expert, the critical vulnerability in a central component of the PHP supply chain could have been easily exploited by low-skilled threat actors to cause important disruption. One of the flaws discovered by the experts is related to the use of the cryptographically weak MT RAND PHP function in the password reset functionality that could allow an attacker to discover a valid password reset token in less than 50 tries. Once obtained the password for a developer's account, threat actors can use it to conduct a supply chain attack by pushing a tainted version of their packages. Experts explain that the source code behind pair.php.net can be found in a project named Pair Web, which is available on GitHub. Upon deploying Pair Web on their test virtual machine, the researchers discovered that it pulled the dependency archive tar in an old version 1.4.7 while the last one is 1.4.14. The older version of archive tar is known to be affected by a directory traversal flaw track to CV 2023-6193 that could potentially lead to arbitrary code execution. These vulnerabilities have been present for more than a decade and were trivial to identify and exploit, raising questions about the lack of security contributions from companies relying on it. The researchers published a video POC of the attack exploring the flaws to achieve arbitrary code execution on their local pair instance. In April 2021, the same team of researchers discovered another vulnerability in the PHP Composer that could have allowed an attacker to execute arbitrary commands and backdoor every PHP package. Researchers from threat intelligence firm Cybel discovered a new rat named Borat that enables operators to gain full access and remote control of an infected system. Unlike other rats, the Borat rat provides ransomware and DDoS services to attackers, expanding their capabilities. The Borat rat allows its operators to compile the malware binary for performing specific features, including DDoS and ransomware attacks. Cybel experts reported that Borat Red comes as a package which includes builder binary, several modules, a server certificate, and more. The Red has a modular structure. Each module implements a specific functionality. Below is a list of modules analyzed by the uh, uh, researchers. There's a keylogger. The module keylogger.exe is responsible for monitoring and storing the keystrokes in the victim's machine. There's a ransomware module. This module delivers a ransomware payload to the victim's machine for encrypting users' files as well as for demanding a ransom. There's the DDoS module, which is used to perform a DDoS attack. Thank you. There's the audio recording. The module can record the audio of a computer. Initially, it checks if a microphone is present in the victim's machine. If it can find a connected microphone, the rep records all audio and saves it in a file named micaudio.wave. There's a webcam module for webcam recording. What does it do? Of course, it records video from the webcam if available. There's a remote desktop module. What does that one do? I don't know. I guess it sets up a hidden remote desktop to allow operators to perform multiple operations including file manipulation and code execution. Then there's the reverse proxy. This module sets up a reverse proxy to protect the remote or the remote operator from having their identity exposed. There's device information module which gathers basic system information. This process hollowing. This module injects malicious code into the legitimate processes using the process hollowing technique. Credential stealing. This module does what? It allows stealing account credentials stored in Chromium based web browsers. Then there's Discord token stealing, which allows the stealing of Discord tokens from infested, infected systems. The Borat rat is also able to perform the following activities to disturb the victims. Play audio, swap mouse buttons, show hide the desktop, show hide the taskbar, hold mouse, enable disable webcam lights, hang system, monitor off, blank screen, and more. A group of researchers from University of Oxford and Arma Swiss SNT or S plus T has devised a new attack technique dubbed broken wire against the popular combined charging system or CCS. 
that could be exploited by remote attackers to disrupt charging for electric vehicles. The combined charging system is one of the most widely used DC rapid charging technologies for electric vehicles. The attack aims at interrupting the control communication between the vehicle and the charger, causing the disruption of charging sessions. The researchers demonstrated that the broken wire attack can be conducted from a distance of as far as 47 meters or 151 feet. Experts pointed out that the interruption of the charging process of critical vehicles such as electric electric ambulances can have life-threatening consequences. The experts did not disclose details about the attack technique to prevent attacks in the wild. The researchers published a video proof of concept of the attack showing their technique in action. Researchers at Cybersecurity Forum Lab 52 discovered a new piece of Android malware while investigating two infrastructure associated with Russia-linked app Turla. The malicious, malicious code was discovered while analyzing the Penguin-related infrastructure. The experts noticed malware was contacting IP addresses that had been used as command and control systems in Russia-linked app Turla's operation. One of the malicious binaries, an Android binary named Process Manager, was contacting the 82.146.35.240 address. Experts analyzed it and excluded the attribution or, you know, attributed the attribution, what? Or attributed it to the Russian app due to its capabilities. Once installed on an Android device, the malware poses as Process Manager and a warning appears about the permissions granted to the application. Below is the list of the granted permissions. I hope you're ready for this list. Whew. Access course location. Access the phone location. Access find location. Access to the location based on GPS. Access network state. View the status of the networks. Uh, view Wi-Fi information. Take pictures and videos from the camera. Allow to put in foreground. Allows to create internet sockets. Allows to modify auto set audio settings. Allows to read a telephone call. Allows to read contacts information. Allows to read external storage devices. Write to the memory card, read phone status and its ID, uh, read SMS stored on the SIM card, start the app when the device is turned on, access to the audio recorder, <coughs> allows uh, to send SMS, prevents devices from locking hibernation. After its first execution, the icon is removed and the application runs in the background showing the notification bar. Upon configuring the application, the malicious code executes a series of tasks that steal information from the infected device and add it to adjacent. The malicious code also gathers information on the installed packages and on the permissions the user has for each package. The researchers also noticed that the malware also attempts to download and install an application called ROSDAN using a goo.gl shorter. The application is on Google Play and is used to earn money as a referral system that is abused by the malicious code. The threat actors install it on the mobile device and make a profit. Who's behind this threat is still unclear and it did use the Turla C2 infrastructure. During the weekend, multiple owners of Trezor Hardware's cryptocurrency wallets reported having received fake data breach notifications from Trezor, Bleeding Computer, first reported. The fake data breach notification emails urged Trezor customers to reset the pin of their hardware wallets by downloading malicious code that could have allowed attackers to steal the funds in the wallets. Later, Trezor reported that MailChimp had confirmed that their service has been compromised by an insider targeting crypto companies. Trezor also took the phishing domain used to by threat actors offline and launched an investigation to determine how many users have been impacted. A statement shared by MailChimp uh, CISO Sibon uh, Smith with the TechCrunch revealed that the company discovered the security breach on March 26th. A threat actor gained access to a tool used by the company's customers support and account administration teams. The company was the victim of a social engineering attack aimed at its employees. The attack resulted in the compromise of employee credentials. Bleeping Computer states that threat actors compromised 319 MailChimp accounts and managed to export audience data from 102 customer accounts. The attacks also gained access to API keys for an undisclosed number of customers. Then, the company also has disabled them. Once obtained, the API keys or once the API keys are obtained, threat actors would have conducted phishing campaigns without access, accessing MailChimp's customer portal. At this time, the company has already notified impacted customers, which are in the cryptocurrency and finance sectors. Anonymous leaked personal details of the Russian military stationed in Bucha, where the Russian military carried out a massacre of civilians that are accused of having raped and shot local women and children. 
leaked data included names, ranks, and passport details of Russians serving in the 64 Motor Rifle Brigade, which occupied Vukha prior to March 31st. The collective continues to target Russian media that are supporting Putin's propaganda built on lies related to the invasion. The anonymous linked group NB65, one of the most active in the last month, announced another success. The hacktivists hacked all Russia's state television and radio broadcasting company VGTRK and leaked sensitive documents along with 900,000 emails. Over 20 years, 900,000 emails and 4,000 files from G VGTRK, a Russian state-owned broadcaster which operates five national TV stations, two international networks, five radio stations, and over 80 regional TV and radio networks. The Russian government has declared VGTRK essential for the security of the state, was the description of the leak. Ukraine's CERT UA published a security advisory to warn of spear phishing attacks conducted by Russian-linked Armageddon Apt, a.k.a. Gamerodon, Primitive Bear, Armageddon, Winter Flounder, and Iron Tilden, targeting local state organizations. The phishing messages have been sent from Vadim underscore Melnik88 at i.ua. The campaign aims at detecting the target systems with malware. The Gamerodon group was first discovered by Symantec and Trend Micro in 2015, but evidence of its activities has been dated back to 2013. Ooh. The group targeted government and military organizations in Ukraine. In December 2019, the app group targeted several UK, uh, Ukrainian diplomats, government and military officials, and law enforcement. In November 2021, Ukraine's premier law enforcement and counterintelligence revealed the real identities of five FSP members behind the Gamerodon cyber espionage group. The Ukrainian CERT UA warns that the emails sent to local government agencies used information on war criminals of the Russian federations as bait. Nordex Group, one of the world's largest manufacturers of wind turbines, was the victim of a cyber attack that forced the company to take down multiple systems. The attack was uncovered on March 31st, and the company immediately started its incident response procedure to contain the attack. Nordex Group shut down IT systems across multiple locations and business units as a precautionary measure to prevent the threat from spreading across its networks. Nordex did not disclose technical details of the cyber attack, but the fact that it was forced to shut down part of its IT infrastructure suggests that it fell victim to a ransomware attack. According to the press release, customers, employees, and other stakeholders may be affected by the shutdown of the company systems. Nordex did not disclose the technical details of the cyber attack, but the fact that it was forced again to shut down part of its IT infrastructure suggests that it fell victim of this of a ransomware attack. In November, another manufacturer of wind turbines was hit by a cyber attack. It was the Danish wind turbine giant Vestas Wind Systems. The company was hit by the Lockbit 2.0 ransomware gang then published stolen data in December after the negotiation for the ransomware payment failed. The data breach of Block involved a former employee that downloaded some unspecified reports of its Cash App investment investing app that contained some U.S. customer information. Cash App is an app that allows users to easily send money, spend money, save money, and buy cryptocurrency. The security breach took place on December 10th, 2021. The downloaded reports includes customers' full names as well as their brokerage account number, the unique identification number associated with the customer's stock activity on a cash app investing, and for some customers also included brokerage portfolio values, brokerage portfolio holdings, and or stock trading activity for one trading day. Block pointed out that the reports don't contain personally identifiable information such as usernames or passwords, social security numbers, dates of birth, payment card information, addresses, and bank account details. At this time, it is unclear how many users were impacted, but Block is noting, notifying roughly 8.2 million current and former customers. The company notified law enforcement and announced it is continuing to review and strengthen administrative and technical safeguards to protect the information of its customers. Block added that at this time, it is difficult to predict future costs associated with a security breach. State Service of Special Communication and Information Protection, SSCIP of Ukraine, spotted a new wave of cyber attacks aimed at gaining access to users' Telegram accounts. The Ukrainian CERT attribu uh, attributes the hacking campaign to threat actors tracked as UAC0094. Threat actors are targeting Telegram users by sending Telegram messages with malicious links to the Telegram website in order to gain unauthorized access to the records and transfer one-time code from SMS. The Telegram messages alert recipients that a login had been detected from a new device located in Russia and urges the recipients to confirm their accounts by clicking on the embedded link. The URL points to a phishing page designed to trick victims into entering their phone numbers as well as the one-time passwords sent via SMS. Once obtained, the one-time password threat actors use it to take over the accounts. Ukraine's, yeah, Ukraine's CERT UA recently published a security advisory to warn of 
spear phishing attacks conducted by Russian linked Armageddon apps, which we just talked about recently. Um, the phishing messages have been sent from, again, that Vadim underscore Melnik 88 at blah blah blah. The campaign aims at infecting the target system with malware. The U.S. government announced that it had dismantled the Cyclops Blink botnet operated by the Russian linked Sandworm at the group. The Justice Department today announced a court-authorized operation conducted in March 2022 to disrupt a two-tiered global botnet of thousands of infected network hardware devices under the control of a threat actor known to security researchers as Sandworm, which the U.S. government has previously attributed to the main intelligence directorate of the General Staff of the Armed Forces of the Russian Federation, the GRU, reads a press release published by DOJ. The operation copied and removed malware from vulnerable internet-connected firewall devices that Sandworm used for command and control of the underlying botnet. In February, U.S. and U.K. cybersecurity and law enforcement agencies published a joint security advisory about a new malware dubbed Cyclops Blink that has been linked to the Russian-backed Sandworm Apt group. Sandworm, aka Black Energy and Telebots, has been active since 2000. That's a very long time. It operates under the control of the Unit 74455 of the Russian GRU's main center for special technologies. The group is also the author of the NotPetya Not ransomware that hit hundreds of companies worldwide in June 2017, causing billions worth of damage. Cyclops Blink is believed to be a replacement for the VPN filter botnet, which was first exposed in 2018, and at the time was composed of more than 500,000 compromised routers and network-attached storage devices. The Cyclops Blink malware has been active since at least June 2019. It targets WatchGuard, Firebox, Small Office, Home Office, uh, network devices and ASUS router models. Cyclops Blink is sophisticated malware with a modular structure. It supports functionality to add new modules at runtime, allowing Sandworm op operators to implement additional capability as required. The malware leverages the firmware update process to achieve persistence. The malware manages clusters of victims, and each deployment of Cyclops Blink has a list of command and control IP addresses and ports that it uses. Fortunately, we were able to disrupt this botnet before it could be used. Thanks to our close work with the international partners, we were able to detect the infection of thousands of network hardware devices. We were then able to disable the GRU's control over those devices before the botnet could be weaponized. The FBI has notified the owners of infected devices in the United States and abroad with the help of foreign law enforcement partners before deleting the Cyclops Blink uh, bot. In mid-March, OpenSSL released updates to address a high-severity denial-of-service vulnerability track to CVE-2022-0778 that affects the bn underscore mod underscore square root function used when certificate, uh, certificate parsing. The flaw was discovered by the popular Google Project Zero researcher Tavis Ormandy. An attacker can trigger the vulnerability by crafting a malformed certificate with invalid explicit curve parameters. The vulnerability impacts OpenSSL versions 1.0.2, 1.1.1, and 3.0. The maintainers of the project address the flaw with the release of versions 1.0.2ZD for premium support customers, 1.1.1N, and 3.02. Palo Alto Networks warns that an attacker can trigger the vulnerability to cause the OpenSSL library to enter an infinite loop when parsing an invalid certificate and can result in a denial of service condition. The company is expected to release security fixes for the above vulnerability during the week of April 18th. According to Palo Alto, Pan OS Global Project App and Cortex XDR agent software contain a flawed version of the OpenSSL library, while Prisma Cloud and Cortex XOR. XSOAR solutions are not impacted. Researchers from mobile security firm CryptoWire discovered a vulnerability track to CVE 2022-22292 in Android 9, 10, 11, and 12 devices. The vulnerability resides in the pre-installed phone app that executes with system privileges on Samsung devices. Experts point out that the phone app has an insecure component which allows local apps to perform privileged operations without any user interaction. The vulnerability could give attackers the ability to initiate a factory reset, i.e. deleting all user data, make phone calls, including emergency numbers such as 911, install and uninstall apps, weaken HTTPS security by installing arbitrary root certificates, all from untrusted apps running in the background and without end-user approval, reads the advisory published by CryptoWire. A remote attacker can trigger the vulnerability to force a factory reset, make phone calls, install and uninstall apps, install root certificates to eavesdrop on protected traffic, all from the untrusted apps running in the background and without end-user approval. I basically just said the same thing within that quote. The CVE 2022-22292 vulnerability has been rated as high severity and was reported to Samsung on November 27, 2021. The company addressed the issue in February with the release of, within the security maintenance release.
process. Malware Bytes researchers observed a new loader dubbed Colibri, which has been used to deploy Windows Information Stealer Tracked's VDAR in a recent campaign. The Colibri loader first appeared in the threat landscape in August 2021, when it was advertised in the underground forums. The campaign was first spotted by researchers from cybersecurity company CloudSec earlier this year, but Malware Bytes focused on the persistent mechanism used by Calibri. The attack chain starts with a weaponized Word document that was used to deliver the Calibri loader that in turn delivers the VDAR info stealer. The attackers used a remote template injection technique to download the Calibri loader using setup.exe. The Word document was used to contact a remote server at securetunnel.co to load a remote template named trkal0.0 containing a malicious macro. Researchers from Cyber Reason observed a sophisticated cyber espionage campaign conducted by FC23 Group campaigns targeting Israeli high-profile targets working for sensitive defense, law enforcement, and emergency services organizations. The threat actor used, uh, used sophisticated social engineering techniques to infect Windows and Android devices of the victims with previously undocumented backdoors. The new malware employed by the threat actors are tracked as Barbie Downloader and Barb Wire Backdoor. Experts pointed out that attackers used a dedicated infrastructure almost completely separated from the known FC23 infrastructure, which was observed in attacks focused on Arabic-speaking targets. The threat actors used fake Facebook profiles to trick victims into downloading Trojanized direct message applications for Android and PC, which allowed them to take over the target's devices. Social engineering tactic used in this campaign relies mostly on classic catfishing, using fake identif identities of attractive young women to engage with mostly male individuals to gain their trust, reads the analysis published by Cyber Reason. These fake accounts have operated for months and seem relatively authentic to the unsuspecting user. The operators seem to have invested considerable effort in tending these profiles, expanding their social network by joining popular Israeli groups, writing posts in Hebrew, and adding friends of the potential victims as friends. Once established contact with the victims and gained their trust, the threat actors uh, suggest migrating the conversation to WhatsApp to obtain the target's mobile number. The cyber spies asked the victims to install a secure messaging app for Android dubbed Volatile Venom or shared a link to a rare archive file containing explicit sexual video and the barbed wire backdoor payload. The Volatile Venom malware is a powerful espionage tool that allows attackers to you ready for this list? Steal SMS message, read contact list information, use a device camera to take photos, steal files with the following extensions, PDF, doc, docs, PTPD, PPTX, XLS, XLSX, text and text, steal images with the following extensions, JPEG, JPEG, ping, record audio, use phishing to steal credentials to popular apps such as Facebook and Twitter, discard system notifications, get installed applications, restart Wi-Fi, record calls, WhatsApp calls, extract call logs, download files to the infected device, uh, Take screenshots, read notifications of the following apps, WhatsApp, Facebook, Telegram, Instagram, Skype, IMO, and Viber. Discards any notifications raised by the system. Microsoft on Thursday announced it has obtained a court order to take over some domains used by Russian linked cyber espionage uh, group F28 in attacks against Ukraine. The F28 group, aka Fancy Bear, Pawn Storm, Sofa C Group, Sednit, and Strontium has been active since at least 2007 and it has targeted governments, militaries, and security organizations worldwide. The group was involved in the string of attacks that targeted 2016 presidential election. The group operates out of a military unit 26165 of the Russian General Staff Main Intelligence Directorate, 85th Main Special Service Center. Most of F-28's campaigns leverage spear phishing and malware-based attacks. The court order allowed the IT giant to sinkhole the domains, which mean that the company was able to redirect the traffic to the seized domain to an infrastructure controlled by Microsoft. This practice allows the researchers to analyze the traffic and the nature of the malicious agents employed in the attacks, along with the mapping the audience of the victims. According to Microsoft, the F-28 group used the domains as part of an attack infrastructure employed in attacks against Ukrainian institutions, including media organizations, U.S. government institutions and think tanks, and the European Union involved in foreign policy. Strontium was using this infrastructure to target Ukrainian institutions, including media organizations. It was also targeting government institutions and think tanks in the United States and the European Union involved in foreign policy. The attacks launched through this infrastructure are part of a campaign conducted by the F-28 group to establish long-term access to the systems of its targets and exfiltrate sensitive information. 
Microsoft notified Ukraine's government about the campaign. It also added the Ukrainian entities were targeted by other Russian-linked cyber espionage groups since the beginning of the invasion. This isn't the first time that Microsoft obtained a court order to seize infrastructure being used by threat actors like F-28. Microsoft used a lawsuit to disrupt a large number of cyber espionage campaigns conducted by the infamous Fancy Bear app hacking group, F-28, Sophocy, Sednit, and Pawn Storm. The experts, with uh, the help of the authorities, took over the command and control infrastructure of the group in order to analyze the traffic and the targets of the malware by using the lawsuit as a tool. Trend Micro Threat Research uh, reported that the recently discovered Spring 4 shell vulnerability, CB 2022-22965, is actively exploited by a Marais-based botnet. Researchers from Chinese cybersecurity firm Keyhole 360 first reported the exploitation of the Spring 4 shell by a Marais-based botnet in early April. After March 30th, we started to see more attempts, such as various web shells, and today, on uh, April 1st, less than one day after the vendor released the advisory, a variant of Marais was, uh, has won the race as the first botnet that adopted this vulnerability, reported Kehoe 360. According to Trend Micro, threat actors are exploiting the Spring 4 shell since the beginning of April. The researchers were able to find the malware file server containing different samples developed by different CPU architects, architectures, four different CPU architectures. Trend Micro experts reported that threat actors exploit the flaw to download the Marais sample to the slash temp folder and execute them after permission change using chmod. Recorded features in SICT group researchers uncovered a campaign conducted by a China-linked threat actor targeting Indian power greed organizations. The security firm is tracking this cluster of malicious activities under the moniker Threat Activity Group 38, aka TAG 38. In February 2021, in SICT group researchers reported a campaign aimed at India's power grid that the experts attributed to China-linked threat actor Red Echo. The attackers employed a modular backdoor dubbed Shadowpad, an implant used by several groups linked to the People's Liberation Army and the Ministry of State uh, Security. Recent attacks targeted at least seven Indian state load dispatch centers responsible for carrying out real-time operations for grid control and electricity dispatch within these respective states. The attacks hit systems located in North India in, pro in proximity to the distributed uh, uh, disputed, excuse me, India-China border in Ladakh. The attacks, which likely started in, in September 2021, aimed at gathering intelligence on critical infrastructure systems in preparation for future intrusions. The analysis of the command and control infrastructure revealed that threat actors used compromised DVR slash IP camera devices primarily located in Taiwan or South Korea. Most of the compromised devices acted as shadow pad command and control servers. Most of them shared a unique SSL certificate spoofing Microsoft on port 443. Experts noticed multiple links between the certificate and multiple China-linked cyber espionage campaigns. However, the coordinated effort to target Indian power grid assets, assets in recent years is notably distinct from our perspective, and given the con continued heightened tension and border disputes between the two countries, we believe there's a cause for concern, concludes the report. Based on the complexity present across national critical infrastructure systems, this off often necessitates lengthy reconnaissance operations to better understand the inner workings of these systems, both in a technological and a physical sense. Researchers from the Checkpoint Research team discovered several malicious Android apps on the official Google Play Store masqueraded as antivirus solutions that were used to deliver the SharkBot banking trojan. SharkBot is an information stealer that steals um, used information stealer used by crooks to siphon credentials and banking information. The malicious code implements evasion techniques and uses geofencing feature to avoid infected devices from China, India, Romania, Russia, Ukraine, and Belarus. The banking trojan uses domain generation algorithm, which is rarely used by Android malware. Once installed on the victim's device, Sharkbot tricks victims into entering their credentials in windows that look like common input forms. The malware is also able to check if it is running in a sandbox to prevent being analyzed by researchers. The malicious apps were downloaded more than 15,000 times before Google removed them from Google Play. Most of the victims are located in Italy and the UK. Like other Android banking Trojan, SharkBot leverages it Android's accessibility service to display fake overlay uh, windows on top of legitimate banking apps. One of the SharkBot's features detailed by the experts is its ability to auto-reply to notifications from Facebook Messenger and WhatsApp to spread links to the fake antivirus apps. On April 8th, a denial of service attack took down the websites of the Finnish Ministries of Defense and Foreign Affairs. These attacks started at about noon, while Ukrainian President Zelensky addressed Finland's members of parliament. 
denial of service attack was launched against the foreign ministry's external website on February uh, Friday, April 8th, 2022, which began at about noon. The situation has returned to normal at around 1 p.m., reads the announcement published by the Finnish government. The State Department has taken steps to curb the attack along with service providers and the cybersecurity center. The Finnish authorities mitigated the attack in around one hour. Despite the Finnish government has not blamed Russia for the DDoS attack, experts speculate that the attack could be linked to the support offered by Finland to Ukraine and the condemnation of the invasion. We now move on to other security news. The U.S. Cybersecurity Infrastructure Security Agency added this recently disclosed CVE 2022-22965, aka Spring 4 Shell, with a CVS score of 9.8 flaw in the Spring Framework, along with three other issues to its known exploited vulnerabilities catalog. According to Binding Operation Directive 22-01, reducing the significant risk of known exploitable vulnerabilities, FCEB agencies have to address the identified vulnerabilities by the due date to protect their networks against attacks uh, exploiting the flaws in the catalog. Experts recommend, of course, also private organizations review the catalog and address the vulnerabilities in their infrastructure. The Spring 4 Shell issue was disclosed last week and resides in the Spring Core Java framework. An unauthenticated remote attacker could trigger the vulnerability to execute arbitrary code on the target system. The framework is currently maintained by Spring.io, which is a subsidiary of VMware. The Spring Framework is an application framework and inversion of control container of the Java platform. The framework's core features can be used by any Java application, but there are extensions for building web applications on top of the Java EE platform. The vulnerability was disclosed after a Chinese security researcher published a proof of concept exploit before deleting its account. Now, all of this you probably heard if you watched the, uh, um, the story at the beginning when I was talking about um, the exploit itself. This week, VMware published security updates to address the Spring 4 Shell flaw. According to the virtualization giant, the flaw impacts many of its cloud computing virtualization products. The flaw impacts Spring Model View Controller and Spring Web Flux applications running on Java Development Kit 9 and later. The U.S. Treasury Department sanctioned the dark web marketplace Hydra Market the same day Germany's Federal Criminal Police Office, the Bundeskriminalamt, uh, announced they have shut down the illegal platform. The seizure of the Hydra Market is the result of an international investigation conducted by the Central Office of Combating Cybercrime in partnership with U.S. law enforcement authorities since August 2021. Hydra was a top Russian darknet market famous among Russian-speaking users that have been active since 2015. According to the authorities, its sales amounted to at least 1.23 billion euros in 2020 alone. The German police seized approximately 23 million euro worth of Bitcoin. The German authorities reported that around 17 million customers and over 19,000 seller accounts were registered on the Hydra market. The U.S. Treasury Department explained that the sanctions aimed at disrupting the proliferation of cybercrime services. In addition to sanctioning Hydra, the Office of Foreign Assets Control also shared a list of over 100 virtual currency addresses associated with its entities uh, operations that were involved in illicit transactions. Treasury announced that it will share additional illicit virtual currency addresses as they become available. The U.S. Treasury Department also sanctioned the virtual currency exchange Garantex. Garantex has been active since 2019. The service allows customers to buy and sell virtual currencies using fiat currencies. Most of Garantex's operations are carried out in Moscow, including at Federation Tower and St. Petersburg, Russia, where other sanctioned virtual currency exchanges have also operated. Here we go. Germany's Federal Criminal Police, the Bundeskriminalamt, announced they've shut down Hydra, one of the world's largest dark web marketplaces. The seizure of the Hydra market, uh, market is the result of an international investigation conducted by the Central Office of Combating Cybercrime in partnership with the U.S. law enforcement authorities since August 2021. Hydra, again, top Russian darknet market, famous among Russian-speaking users since 2015. Hydra quickly rose to become the most prominent Russian language darknet market after the closure of a key competitor in 2017. The platform specialized in the sale of drugs, although listings of on, si on the site uh, also included forged documents, data such as credit card information and digital services, reported blockchain analytics firm Elliptic. Products were advertised for sale in a number of countries, Russia, Ukraine, Belarus, and Kazakhstan. According to the authorities, its sales amounted to, again, 1.23 billion euros in 2020 alone. German police seized 23 million worth of Bitcoin. Um, there were 17 million customers and 19,000 seller accounts registered. The Frankfurt M uh, main, uh, Frankfurt am Main Public Prosecutor's Office, the Central Office of Combating Cybercrime, and the Federal Criminal Police Office, BKA, today, Tuesday, 
uh, secured the server infrastructure in Germany of the world's largest illegal darknet marketplace, the Hydra, and thus closed it, reads the announcement published by the German BKA. Bitcoins amounting to, current, uh, to currently the equivalent of approximately 23 million euro were seized, which are attributed to the marketplace. According to blockchain analytics firm Elliptic, the Hydra market has facilitated over 5 billion in Bitcoin transactions since 2015. The company confirmed that the seizure took place on April 5th, 2022, through a series of 88 transactions amounting to 543.3 Bitcoin. With that, I say thanks again for watching. Don't forget to share and subscribe if you haven't already and smash the bell if you haven't already. And I'll see you on the next episode. Take care.